everyone, Nicholson here, and welcome to Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. I'm your host, and on this show, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we'll be going over all of the day's movie news, as well as going over what it means for the production in general, such as casting decisions, trailer announcements, director announcements, things like that. So, without any further ado, let's get started with today's Hot Topics. Today's episode is going to be a two-part episode. The first part, I'm going to be going over the major categories in the Academy Award nominations, um, followed by the second part of the episode, which will be a normal movie news segment. So uh, if you guys just don't really care all that much about the Academy Awards or the nominations or what got snubbed or what was put in somewhere that shouldn't have been somewhere, then you can just wait until the um, the second part of the episode comes up online sometime later on today. Uh, I will be tweeting out and putting on the Facebook page when that episode comes out, but Let's get started with the Academy Award nominations. So I'm going to be going through just basically the best director, uh, best uh, picture, best actor, actress, supporting actor, supporting actress, and then obviously animated film. And we'll get to that in a second. So let's start off with the best picture. So the nominations for best picture uh, for the 87th Academy Awards are American Sniper, Birdman, Boyhood, Grand Budapest Hotel, Imitation Game, Selma, Theory of Everything, and Whiplash. Now, I am happy that the majority of these films are in this list because I felt that almost all of these films definitely deserved to be here. Um, Birdman, absolutely. That is my favorite film of the year. I do hope that that movie wins. Um, very close second for me. Okay, I have a different definition of what I determine to be the best film of the year versus what my favorite film of the year. I personally believe that Birdman is both the best film and my personal favorite. The second movie after that, where I think is the best film, is Boyhood. The one I think will win if Birdman doesn't, is the theory of everything. And the reason that I say that is because Boyhood has been getting a lot of credentials about having a 12-year shoot, the ambitiousness of the project... Even Jack Black himself at the Golden Globes even came out and said, all right, you guys are making a big deal out of this. It's not a 12-year film shoot. He got together with these people for a couple of days, possibly like a week or two weeks, every summer for 12 years. And that's how he filmed it. So I, I thought that while he was still up there acknowledging and supporting his friend Richard Linklater and his accomplishment that he did, he was reeling everybody back in and saying, this is not as big of a deal as everybody else is making it out to be. Um, I do believe that Boyhood is a great accomplishment. I think that Birdman is more of a cinematic achievement and more of an ambitious achievement um, just based off of what they were able to do in that film. Boyhood is still a, an amazingly well-done film. Theory of Everything is the type of movie that the Academy voters look for. That is the type of movie that hits all of the criteria. They'll have a little checkbox that they go down and it'll hit every single one. It's a biopic. It's about someone struggling with a disease. It's about somebody attempting to overcome it and all the trials and tribulations that they had to go through. It's also a period piece. Everything like this goes into the Academy's decision as to whether or not it will win or it won't. That's where I think that Birdman and Theory of Everything are the two now that are going to be going head to head. I originally did think that Boyhood would... and. I, it still definitely has a good chance of it, but those are my three big contenders. Birdman, I definitely hope that it wins, and I do believe that it deserves to win. Boyhood, if Birdman doesn't, I'll be very happy that Boyhood does. Um, Theory of Everything was also a film I really enjoyed, so I wouldn't mind it winning, but I would be very disappointed if Birdman did not win. Now, the obvious snubs, uh, movies that I feel should have been on here, I feel that Nightcrawler definitely should be on this list. Foxcatcher is the, the reason that I have Foxcatcher as one that I feel should be on the list is only because Bennett Miller was nominated for Best Director. And that, to me, is very surprising. How can a, a, a movie that pretty much solely hinges on the performances get a Best Director nomination when there's only five directors that are nominated? There are between five and ten films that are nominated. It logically makes sense that the Best Director list would be directors of films that were nominated for Best Picture. But Bennett Miller was nominated, Foxcatcher was not. So I'll get to the, that part when I, when I get to the director. Um, the other one was Gone Girl. Gone Girl, I felt, was a movie that definitely should have been on there because of how it was handled. Fincher, while it wasn't his best film that he's done, it was one of his best, but it wasn't his best. 
Um, I really did feel that he did an amazing job with that film. I felt that the pace of that movie was really well done. Um, the characters were really well layered, and and part of that was due to Gillian Flynn and her uh, her script, and obviously her book that she adapted from. But to me, it's I don't know. I just I feel that that was kind of the the unspoken hero of it, if you were to make a term of that. Um, the one that I feel should not be on this list is American Sniper. While I felt it was a good movie, it's not an Oscar movie. The, the main things about it, it's got Oscar Darling written all over it. Stars Bradley Cooper. The Academy loves Bradley Cooper. Directed by Clint Eastwood. The Academy loves Clint Eastwood. So, again, more so of a... We're giving the, we're giving the nomination to him because he you know we want to see him set a record because I think Bradley Cooper set the record of three consecutive nominations. I don't know if anybody else has done that. I haven't looked into that yet. Somebody probably has, but it, it, put it in the comment in the comment section if you guys know if somebody else has been nominated three times consecutively um, it, it, for an Academy Award. This is technically his fourth nomination because he also was a producer on the film. So he gets a Best Picture nomination for that. Um, but yeah, that, that's my stance on Best Picture. I, I really feel that Nightcrawler should have been in there. Gone Girl definitely should have been in there. Foxcatcher, the only reason I feel that it should have been in there is because Bennett Miller was nominated for Best Director, but I don't even feel that Bennett Miller should have been nominated for Best Director. I feel that the pacing of that movie was not very well, very handled, that handled very well. Sorry. Um... No, it, it, to me, it was the performances of that movie that, that really captivated it. And even though the director is part of the reason why the performance come out so strong, I still feel that so many other elements of the movie were not handled as well as they should have been. Um, and so that's why I don't feel that, that he deserved the nomination. Uh, but let's get into Best Director. So Best Director, uh, we have Wes Anderson for The Grand Budapest Hotel. We have Alejandro Inaratu for Birdman. We have Richard Linklater for Boyhood. Bennett Miller for Foxcatcher, still to me is a question mark, and Morton Tildum for Imitation Game. Now, like I, I just previously said, Bennett Miller to me was kind of the standout. It, it was surprising to see him be put on this list and Ava DuVernay not be put on this list because what she did with Selma, well, if you have not seen Selma, go and see Selma. It is a captivating film. It is such a moving film. The, the everything that it talks about I had a, a little bit of a, an argument with my brother about this um, about the stance of of uh, what this movie is relevant to and, and and you know why is it coming out now why are all of these movies coming out now dealing with race issues and stuff like that and I said because it's a very hot topic <clears throat> I mean it's very timely right now I mean we've had you know from Trayvon Martin to to most recently the Ferguson incident. Um, th there's just been a lot of race clashing in, especially in North America, but all around the world. And it, these really are timely stories to show that not that long ago that we were even worse. We were even more at each other's throats. Things were illegal. Like things were not allowed for certain types of people. And we've come so far just in the last 50 to 60 years, but we still have a long ways to go. And, th and that's really what this movie hits hard with. And, and for me, Ava DuVernay not being nominated, I think, was one of the biggest slaps in the face. Um, Morton Tildum, I, I really did like his direction in Imitation Game, although I felt that I really had a Ron Howard influence for, from that movie, especially, most notably, Beautiful Mind. Um, I really felt that that was the inspiration for the movie, the, the layout of the shots, the color palettes that he chose, um, just most of the cinematography in general, it really did feel like Ron Howard directed the movie. Um, so that to me is kind of surprising that he's on there, but it's mainly because Imitation Game is one of the movies that should have been nominated for Best Picture, and I'm glad it was. Um, but having Damien Chazelle for Whiplash or Dan Gilroy for Nightcrawler not on this list, again, it's... There are always going to be, in most categories, there are going to be people who should get the nomination who won't. And usually it's because there are so many other people that are better. Wes Anderson, I personally don't believe that he should be on this list because Grand Budapest Hotel was not his best film. Um, this is his first nomination, which actually does surprise me. Um, I would have thought movies like... I mean, Three Kings was more of a political movie, so I, I can understand why that wouldn't be nominated, uh, at least for Best Director. But, I mean, you look at the Royal Tenenbaums, and I think that was that either was nominated or won for best screenplay, but he wasn't nominated uh, for that movie, so that was just really surprising. 
Um, but I, I personally don't feel that this was his best film. It was his most, most commercially successful film, as far as I'm aware. So that might be why it's getting the recognition, but that should not be a reason as to why it gets recognition. The, the financial success of a movie should not hinder on that whatsoever. It should also not say that be, if a movie is successful, it should not get recognition. So I'm just, I, I, there are a couple of things out here. I personally believe it's going to be a toss up between Linklater and Inaratu. Uh, obviously, I'm hoping for Inaratu because of his handling of Birdman. I just thought it was absolutely incredible. The ability to keep a coherent storyline going that spread over several days while being told as a single shot. I mean, it, it just, it's absolutely fascinating. But what Richard Linklater did over the course of 12 years, being able to have people over 12 years stay in character for only a short period of time each year, but stay in character and really watching these people grow up and, and evolve. I mean, it, a lot of props have to be given to Linklater for that. And so I think it's a toss up between the two. I do hope that Inaratu wins though. Now we're on to best lead actor. So for the best lead actor category, we have Steve Carell for Foxcatcher. We have Bradley Cooper for American Sniper, Benedict Cumberbatch for Imitation Game, Michael Keaton for Birdman, and Eddie Redmayne for Theory of Everything. Now out of this list, personally, I believe Michael Keaton will win. I don't see any reason as to why he won't. The close second would be Eddie Redmayne because, again, it's a biopic. It's a period piece. It's somebody suffering from a disability and trying to overcome that. Those are things the Academy really looks at. Michael Keaton, on the other hand, this is a resurgence of him. A lot of buzz is being generated about his performance because it is really fascinating. The, the, the issue that I think will arise if the Academy is as stuck up as a lot of people think that they are, they will compare Michael Keaton's performance in that movie to how he is in real life, how people perceive Michael Keaton, and is he just playing a caricature of himself or a version of himself? And... Well, I personally don't believe it. I did see it a little bit. But again, every actor brings a part of themselves into every role. So I, ho I, I personally believe that he will win. I think Eddie Redmayne is a close second. But first of all, Bradley Cooper being nominated before Jake Gyllenhaal, I'm sorry, but no. The performance Jake Gyllenhaal gave in Nightcrawler was almost next level like you did not you you could not know that it was jake gyllenhaal i mean obviously facially he looked like him he was very gaunted and very you know skinny and very horrifying especially the look in his eyes like just the depraved distant individual somebody who is separated from from humanity he does not have his conscience he has a goal that he needs to get to and there is no morality level in his head he has no qualms with having to step over people or put people in harm's way in order to get what he needs and it's a riveting performance because you're captivated by this guy. And the fact that he was not nominated and we had both Bradley Cooper nominated, which again, it was a great performance of his, but it wasn't his best. I don't, I don't know why um, they were nominating him other than the fact that he was playing a real American hero. Um, and also on top of that, Steve Carell. Steve Carell was a supporting actor in that movie. He was not the lead character. The lead character was Channing Tatum. Now it, he had a lot of screen time, but Steve Carell was a supporting character in that movie. He was not a lead character. And so I, I don't agree with that decision, um, especially looking at the best supporting actor list. There was room for Steve Carell to go in there. There definitely was. And that could have left room. Like if Steve Carell was pushed to supporting actor <clears throat> and Bradley Cooper was not nominated, that meant that both Jake Gyllenhaal would get a nomination and David Oyelowo for Selma. I mean, how he didn't get nominated is the only thing that I can think of is that it came out too late. Um, it came out at it select screenings only at the end of December and didn't actually release into wide release until the beginning of January. Um, did not have enough time for that movie to be shown to the ma majority of Academy voters, which is like 5,700 and change. Um, so it, it is just really kind of a letdown, a little disappointing that these people did not get the recognition that they deserved. Yet certain people like Bradley Cooper got a nomination when I don't personally don't believe that he should have. Uh, just based on the other actors that are out there. But this was one of the hardest categories to be included in this year because the amount of talent that is out there in Hollywood is just staggering. But that's where we are. And it, and it really is unfortunate. I really do feel bad for both David Oyelowo and Jake Gyllenhaal, just in terms of the recognition that they should be getting for their roles. Not because they're not going to go on to any further jobs. I mean, Jake Gyllenhaal, I'm going to be talking about that in the next part. He's got a 
pretty big gig coming up here soon. David Oyelowo, he's not going to be short of any roles in the upcoming future. So I don't have any qualms with that. It's just they did deserve the recognition for the roles that they gave. That's just my personal opinion. Now we're getting on to Best Lead Actress. So we have Marion Cotillard for Two Days, One Night. We have Felicity Jones for The Theory of Everything. Julianne Moore for Still Alice. Rosamund Pike for Gone Girl. And Reese Witherspoon for Wild. Now, there's one big thing about this. A lot of these names were already brought up before. And Marion Cotillard for Two Days, One Night. This came out of left field. Nobody had any idea about it. What is an obvious snub? Jennifer Aniston for Cake. I mean, the... The bare... I'm trying to find the right word to describe it. The, the, the barrenness of her role. The depravity of her role. The, the... I can't even find the right word. You can't describe her role in one word. It's... I've never seen Jennifer Aniston do anything like this. Not since, what was it, The Good Girl, um, I think was the last time that she really showed acting prowess like this. This is just a, an unbelievably powerful performance by Jennifer Aniston. She did not have a chance of winning, but her being nominated over, or uh, Marion Cotillard being nominated over Jennifer Aniston, I personally think was the incorrect choice. Again, this is all my opinion. This is what I've based on after viewing all the movies. That being said, I have not seen Two Days, One Night, so I cannot comment on Marion Cotillard's uh, prowess. I can only comment on what I've heard from the vast majority of other people out there who are bringing up their two cents about this film and saying that while she did a really good job in the movie, Jennifer Aniston, this was her year. This was her year to get the nomination. She wouldn't have won. This is going to be Julianne Moore's um, Academy Award. Um, I would love for Rosamund Pike to win. I really do think that, that her turn in Gone Girl... Um, was just fascinating, but Julianne Moore, again, going back to what I said about Eddie Redmayne, it, it's a movie that the Academy loves. It's somebody suffering from an illness and their struggle to try to overcome it or at least come to terms with it. And that's what the whole movie's about. She's suffering from Alzheimer's and, and the whole movie's about her kind of falling apart. And uh, it's it's just, it's gut-wrenching. It's just, it, it hits you right in the heart and it's it's a powerful performance. I don't see how Julianne Moore cannot win. I would love to see Rosamund Pike win, but it's Julianne Moore's award to lose. Um, but I still would have loved Jennifer Aniston to get a nomination. All right, now we're going on to Best Supporting Actor. So for the Best Supporting Actor category, we have Robert Duvall for The Judge. We have Ethan Hawke for Boyhood. Edward Norton for Birdman. Mark Ruffalo for Foxcatcher. And J.K. Simmons for Whiplash. To me, there are no surprises here. There's no, uh, there are no other roles that I thought that should have been on here. Um, you know, it's J.K. Simmons' award. He's going to win it. He was absolutely powerful uh, in in Whiplash. You know, and one, two, three, four. Nope, not my tempo. Not my tempo. It's okay. And one, two, three. Not my tempo. Not my tempo. Like it's just that whole sequence, and then the last like 15 minutes of the movie is absolutely breathtaking it, it's just it's an adrenaline rush it really is like the whole movie is just captivating because it, you don't you don't expect it i know there are people out there who have had experiences with teachers similar to this i've never personally had anybody like that um but it, that to me terrifies me that there's people out there that are actually employed that are like that but jk simmons this is his award to lose i don't see how he could lose to anybody if if it was anybody See, I don't, I don't know. Edward Norton was good. Um, Mark Ruffalo, I found, was a little bit better than Edward Norton was in Birdman. I really do feel that his role, his his very subtle uh, capability in Foxcatcher as um, Channing Tatum's older brother, I really felt that it was a powerful performance. So he might... No, nah, it's J.K. Simmons. I, I can't see anybody else. If, if you know anybody else who didn't get nominated for Best Supporting Actor uh, that was not on this list, please put it in the comment section because... To me personally, I can't think of anybody who was snubbed for this this one. Th they got it right for Best Supporting Actor. I, I personally can't think of anybody else that should have been on this list. But if you know anybody, put a comment in the comment section for me. So now we're getting on to the last two. So we have Best Supporting Actress. So we have Patricia Arquette for Boyhood. We have Laura Dern for Wild. We have Kira Knightley for The Imitation Game. Emma Stone for Birdman. And Meryl Streep for Into the Woods. Now... 
I've had a problem with Meryl Streep for the last couple of years. Not to say that she's not absolutely amazing, but to me, and a lot of the other film sites and stuff like that are saying stuff like this, so it's it's not really news, but they're nominating her just to nominate her. At least that's what it's coming across as, because that was not an Academy Award nomination-worthy role that she played. It, it wasn't in any way, shape, or form. Um, I mean, Naomi Watts from St. Vincent, I felt, should have had a, a spot on that list instead of Meryl Streep. I thought Rene Russo for Nightcrawler should have been on that list. Hell, Carrie Coon from Gone Girl, the, the woman who played Ben Affleck's twin sister in the movie. That was... That those sequences were one of the most fascinating sequences in the movie when it was just him and his sister. The the natural uh, interactions that they had, they felt like they were family members. They felt like twins. They felt like they could have been siblings. And on top of that, the the way that her character was used in the film, it served the story. It wasn't just an additional character just to have somebody bounce ideas off of. She served the story. And I really feel that she's not getting any recognition for her role in Gone Girl. And I really feel that she deserves some. I mean, this is Patricia Arquette's role, or, or award to win. Um, Kira Knightley was serviceable in Imitation Game. I didn't feel like there was anything noteworthy about the role. Um, Emma Stone as Birdman, she surprised the hell out of me in that film. Um, although I do feel that she was playing just a little bit agitated version of herself. So I, I can see how she could definitely get the nomination, but she won't win. Meryl Streep definitely won't. That was just to get her like her 19th nomination or 20th nomination or something like that. But... I personally believe either Carrie Coon, Renee Russo, or Naomi Watts should have been on this list over Meryl Streep. And even possibly Laura Dern. Because Laura Dern in Wild wasn't in it for very long. She was only in it for like 15, 20 minutes. Um, so I personally don't believe that, that she should have been nominated. Um, to me, that's like nominating a guest actor on a TV episode. You know, it's like best guest star of the year. And it was somebody who was in an episode for 10 minutes, one episode out of 22 episodes in the season. Oh, they were the best guest role. Well, how can you determine that? You don't know the layers of their character. You weren't able to get anything from that. It's, yeah, it was a great actor and a great role that gave great performance, but there was no layers. There was no depth. The other person put a lot more stock into their character. You felt more for their character, anything like that. I personally feel that Laura Dern should not have been on there. They're recognizing her, which is good, but... There were other people on there that should have been nominated. Carrie Coon, I, I think she should have taken Laura Dern's spot, and uh, Rene Russo should have taken Meryl Streep's spot. That's my personal opinion, but I don't have any say in the Academy votes, so this is all a moot point. Now we're getting on to the big one here. Now, Best Animated Film. So these are the films that were nominated for Best Animated Film. We have Big Hero 6, The Box Trolls, How to Train Your Dragon 2, Song of the Sea, and The Tale of Princess Kaguya. Now, I have not seen Song of the Sea or The Tale of Princess Kaguya. I have seen the Lego movie. And how this movie was not nominated is beyond me. I, I honestly do not fathom how this was not nominated. Whether or not it won, a lot of people pegged it to win, but whether or not it won was neither here nor there. The fact that it wasn't even nominated is ridiculous. This year is one of the most, in, in my opinion, this is one of the most botched years that the Academy has had. First off, well, I don't believe that there was any racial disparity in the decision making. I personally feel that not having any uh, people of color outside of, like, there's all white people. All white people. Um, all the actors are white. Majority of the categories outside of acting are all male nominees. So it's a lack of women being nominated. It's a lack of uh, ethnic diversity being nominated. Again, I'm not, I've come up with this point before. I'm not saying that they should be on there only because there is a lack of color. What I am saying is that, again, going back to something like uh, Best Director, Bennett Miller should not have been on that list. Bennett Miller should have been replaced with Ava DuVernay who directed Selma. She did a far better job than Bennett Miller did with Foxcatcher. Foxcatcher should have not only been about 30 to 40 minutes shorter, and there were a lot of... If you watch the movie, there are a lot of parts that they could trim down. Um, they didn't need as many parts in that film, but Ava DuVernay should have been nominated. Um, David Oyelowo should have been nominated for Best Actor. I mean, the, the lack of diversity this year is is staggering because people legitimately deserved the nominations and they did not get them. So I, I just, I, I don't get what that is. But on top of that, the Lego movie not being nominated when it is in fact in stone, 
the best animated feature film of 2014 is absolutely ridiculous. I, I want to know what your guys' comments are, um, what you guys' thoughts are about this, uh, the, the whole list, what you think should have been nominated, what you think did get nominated, what you think will win. Um, but more importantly, what do you think was left off? Who, who do you think did not get the recognition that they deserved? Um, anything of that sort, put a comment in the comment section um, and be sure to check back in February when I do my recap episode of the uh, 87th can. Uh, uh, 87th annual Academy Awards. So <clears throat> that'll be premiering. I believe it's at the end of February that uh, that, that will be showing. So uh, my episode will be up most likely the next day. So be on the lookout for that. And also be on the lookout later on today for the full installment of the next episode of Coming Soon, Movie News with Nicholson. But uh, yeah, when we get more information about the Academy Awards, when we do the recap, I will definitely update you guys on here. Well, that'll about do it for our Oscar nominations recap. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have been a great audience. Why don't you go ahead and click the subscribe button there in the bottom corner and get updates whenever we post a new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at Nicholson, N-I-K-L-S-U-N for all of your movie updates. And also give us a like on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash movie news with Nicholson. If you guys ever have a topic or a question you'd like to have discussed on the show, go ahead and put a comment in the comment section or you can email us at movienewswithnicholson at gmail.com. And on every Friday episode, we'll try to get to as many as we can. But until next time, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.